book of the book of Isaiah chapter 6 describes what happens to the worship the Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 6 that the foundation that the pillars shook I mean everything shook through the praise a través de la adoración se temblaron los cimientos en Isaías capítulo 6 and you know, she's saying about the confirmation about Sister uh, um, Flores felt the heat that my wife was talking about, and then Sister Janie felt the shaking that Pastor Garcia had felt uh, the same thing. So it was a confirmation of what they were feeling that day, how everything just shook, how everything just moved. And it was just so powerful that, I mean, it was just, I mean, we're just, we, we don't know what God is going to do or how he's going to do it. We're just going to come in here with an expectancy. And I just want to encourage you for you to come in with that expectancy and, and, and to say, God, I don't know what you're going to do today, but I'm ready. If you're going to shake this thing, if you knock this building down, that's okay, because he'll give you an opportunity to build it. Another one. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yes, ma'am, that you. Oh, on Sunday, I was longing to come to church, and something, you know, at home, we didn't come. But I was, like, ready and waiting for it, and then all of a sudden, we didn't come. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like, God, yeah, but God knows. I mean, God knows all things. God knows why things happen. And sometimes we might not understand everything, uh, but God knows all things. But as long as there's air in our in our being, there's an opportunity for it any time of the day. I believe that. I believe. This is my belief that we don't have to be in church to have these kind of experiences. Yo creo, yo siento que no tenemos que estar en la iglesia el domingo para tener una experiencia. You can be at your house and have this kind of experience. You can be at your job and have this kind of experience. En el trabajo, en tu casa, puedes tener esta experiencia anywhere because God is omnipresent. Dios es omnipresente. That means He's everywhere at the same time. So, you can feel his presence at your house. You can feel your house shaking. You might go outside yes. and there's no wind, but it's just his presence. Su presencia es tremenda. Amen. So I want to encourage you. There's going to be another opportunity. I know it. I know God's starting something and he's not through yet. He's not through. I believe something's going to happen. Yes. Are you excited? Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. So let us give God praise. We finished our teaching on in what condition is your heart. Terminamos la enseñanza de en qué condición está tu corazón. Last week we did um, 15 weeks, 15 semanas, talking about the heart and getting the heart right. Hablando del corazón y que el corazón esté bien, we have talked about the heart being right. You know, everything else is going to be right. But the Lord has been speaking to me. The Lord has been dealing with me. On this subject that I'm going to start today, is stay, stay. I might not get, you know, a, a, a whole lot on it, but I want to try to lay a little bit of a foundation. Quiero sentar un poquito de fundación, because I wanted to do testimony, because I believe somebody needed to hear something like this. I believe somebody needed to hear a word that said, you mean I can be healed if I just cry out to him? Yes, you can. Amen. Yes, you can. Amen. Can I get an amen, somebody? Amen. So, uh, somebody needs to hear. Somebody needs to hear what God has done in your life. At your job, somebody needs to hear that. At, at your house, at your neighbor, at the store. Anywhere you go. Listen, they opened up this place. I don't know if you know this place, but it's called Juicy Fruit. This place is right here by, um, by uh, GameStop and Dollar Tree. They sell fruits. They sell, it's like a restaurant. It's como un restaurante. Es un lugar nuevo. Well, we've been going there, you know, quite a bit, my wife and I, you know, we buy a little juice here or fruit here or whatever. But let me tell you what I've, what I've done. I've been ministering to the owner. I've been speaking to her. I told her that I was a, 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 a Christian. I didn't tell her first that I was a pastor. I just told her that I was a Christian. But then as, as, as we started getting to know her, I told her that I was a pastor of this church, and I mean, her eyes lit up, and then I started telling her some of the testimonies of the lady that I put up here that got healed, and, and of how Sister uh, 
Sylvia got healed of lupus and just different things. Le estaba diciendo testimonio. And she began to cry. Empezó a llorar allá atrás in her restaurant, in su restaurant. And uh, I began to minister to her. And I told her what I do. And, and she said, I've never, you know, I'm a Catholic by name. Soy católica por nombre. But I, that's all, I, that's all, you know, I just know what people have told me. Solamente sé lo que la gente me ha dicho. So I've been ministering to her every time we go over there. Cada vez que vamos, la ministra esta persona. And uh, I started sending her the, the devotionals. Every morning I send her a devotional. Cada mañana le mando un devocional. And uh, when I sent her the first couple of devotionals, she said, I get you devotionals and I rejoice. But what is this John 3.17? What is that? ¿Qué es Juan 3.17? What is this? Other thing that you say, what does that mean? ¿Qué es lo que I said, you don't know what that is? Dice, no sabes qué? Dijo, no. I said, well, it's a scripture. It's in the Bible. She said, what is, what's a Bible? ¿Qué es una Biblia? And I said, I'm going to bring you a Bible. Te voy a traer una Biblia. Dijo, sí. Dijo, porque yo quiero aprender. She said, I want to learn. Amen, so today I took her five Bibles. <laughs> Not one. I'm taking five Bibles. <laughs> she said, I only, need, I, don't, I only need one. I said, no, you got people back there cooking. They need to hear the word of God too. Amen. She, and then she opened, it, she opened it up and she looked at it she goes, so where do I start? What do I do? How do I read this thing? What are these numbers here? So I started explaining to her to explicar los capítulos, los versículos. I told her, this is where you start. This is what you need to know. You want to know the life of Jesus first. You want to know what Jesus did for you. And she was just, she was absorbing everything. Estaba absorbiendo todo. And just to see the hunger. I need you to get something because the Bible says that in the last days, people are going to be hungry. They're going to have itching ears to hear the word of God. Dice la palabra de Dios que en los últimos días la gente iba a traer tener comezón de oír palabra de Dios. And this lady was grabbing her. She said, "I need you. I need you to teach me." The Bible says, "How will they know unless they have somebody to teach them?" ¿Cómo van a saber si no tienen alguien que les enseñe? Dice la palabra de Dios. So I want to encourage you to testify. Not everybody, you cannot assume that they know about the Lord. You cannot assume that somebody knows. Usted no puede asumir que alguien sabe, que, que la persona que está en un lado de usted sabe de Dios. You cannot assume that. You have to let them know. And if they know, praise God. And if they know, they don't know, then that's an opportunity for you to let them know about the Lord. Can I get the man somebody? Right. That is awesome. Yes, brother. Uh, 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 Father, I don't know. <laughs> I came to this church the reason because of my wife. It's okay. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I know y'all see me sitting here and deal with my demons. I went from the back to the front and went back and and now I'm back in the front and like that day, that Sunday, whatever comes over me, I, I can't describe it. Before I come to church, I say every day that you say, and I don't know why. <laughs> I said I don't want it. I don't want to be. But it's something that I had asked for during the time of, of death, death doorstep. And I was sincere for real about it. But I didn't think it was going to happen. I walk around saying things that I don't know where they're coming from. I'm from a family of Christians that are broken. And they need a guy. Yes. And I tell them, I, I have two of them that are, that they, they minister, you know, but why won't they take the family back and put them together? I would do it just to see my family happy through my sins. I would throw parties just to see them together. <laughs> I, I say, I don't pray. I don't read the Bible like I'm supposed to. 
But I'm not questioning. I'm just telling them why me. The other morning, I was supposed to be here at 5.30 because I was sitting on my couch and in my ear said, get up and go. I looked at the clock like I do every night. Every morning I stay up and I watch 5.30 pass me by. And then at night he told me to get up and go. <laughs> I said, I turned the TV down. It's in hot. There was nobody there. He said, hey, get up and go. I said, why are you telling me to get up and go? You know I'm not. It was, I said, why? He has me questioning him. He said, can I tell you to go? But I told him I wasn't gonna go. So the next day, I didn't come. So the next day, next night, same place, same hour, and I'm waiting, same time. And I don't hear nobody. And I'm ready to go. <coughs> but it was the morning where it, with the morning that you could make it. You weren't here. I fell asleep on my couch and I had a dream that I was standing at the door wanting to come in and I was too late. Because when he told me to go, I didn't go. So now, today, I haven't had a job for like six, eight months. I been just, I said everything's okay, but I was ready for more. Man, I went back to the job I used to have. And I, well, the day before, I put it on the application and I told my wife, I said, you know what? I'm not trying to get this job. I have this job. I'm just going to go put out the paper because Jesus already went over here and told him that, hey, I got somebody coming in and he, he's going to get his job back. I'm going to get him work. Huh? It's his paper. I got them out there. When is it? I know. They were ready for me to work. The guy said, I, I did the welding test and the guy said, you know what, we weren't going to hire you back. But he asked me a question. He said, why would I hire you back? I said, I'm a different guy. Mm -hmm. I didn't know where it was coming from with you. I said, I have a choice not to drink. You're more than welcome to come. I go and it makes me feel good. I said, but if you don't want me back, I understand. But I'm here to go back to face what I didn't face before. And he said, because of that answer, and my good will be, that he, he, he welcomes me back with open arms. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He gets me on the Now it's awkward to get hired at Christmas, right? Got it, good. I believe that I believe that we we all of us have been called. We don't know, you know. We have been teaching on purpose. What is our purpose here on this earth? A lot of the times we don't know the purpose. We don't know our purpose. But I've always felt that. It doesn't matter how much I fail. If I call upon him, he said he was going to answer me. No importa que tanto falle yo, él prometió su bendijo su palabra. Si tú clamas a mí, yo te voy. If you call upon me, I'm going to answer you. Because he knows the intentions of the heart. Le conoce las intenciones del corazón. He knows if you're doing it from here or if you're doing it from here. Yes. Ya sabe. So, it does not matter if, if, if we failed or if we missed an appointment with God because, you know, I tell you, the only time that I don't come in here is if I'm really, really sick, really bad that I can't get up and I feel bad. 
because this is my appointment. This is me, me, me see that. Well, this is my appointment with God. And I miss it and I feel bad. And my wife's there told me, I feel bad because I, I couldn't go. I couldn't go. And, but I know that he's not a, a God that has a whip and a sword and say, I told you you should have been there. And that's not the kind of God that we serve. Isn't that like I said? Yes, he's a just God. Es un Dios justo. Yes, he's going to punish, but he's going to punish those who refuse him. Aquellos que rehusan, que no lo quieren a él, this is where he's going to bring wrath on them. Es cuando va a traer la maldición. But if you repent, say, God, I'm sorry. God, I know there's another opportunity. As long as I have breath in me, as long as you're still seated on the throne, mientras está sentado en el trono, y hay aire, there's still an opportunity for me to repent and to get some of you. De arrepentirme y de agarrar lo que tú tienes para mí. So, there's hope. Look at your neighbor and tell him, there's hope. Because he still, he hasn't came back for his church. Todavía no viene por su iglesia. Todavía no viene. He's not here yet. So there's hope for us to get our life straight and to get our life right and be called. Si él llama, abre la puerta, open the door. He said, if you open the door, he said, then I'll come in. I'll come in to you. Si tú abres la puerta, yo voy a entrar así. Then I'm going to eat with you. I'm going to dine with you. Voy a comer contigo. Voy a convivir contigo. He said, if you... But if we don't open the door, he can't. He would just turn around. Amen. Amen. So it's amazing how, even though we feel unworthy, he does things that you're like, wow, I didn't deserve this. But you did it anyway. A veces nos sentimos inmerecedores. Y decimos, Señor, yo no merezco esto, pero como que algo hiciste. Lord, I don't deserve to be blessed like this, but you bless me anyway. That is awesome. You, can't, you cannot explain these things. Esas cosas, no sé, no. You, you can, you, you'll break your head trying to figure out, why God, why are you, why are you blessing me like that after I've been so bad to you? After I've been so, so uh, disrespectful or so disobedient. Why? God says, because I love you. ¿Por qué, Señor? ¿Por qué eh, 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 me hiciste bien cuando yo merezco mal? Because I love you. I love you. You are my child. I died for you. Tú mi hijo, yo morí por ti. I left everything that I had to come and die for you. Dejé todo, everything, everything I had, everything. My throne, the Bible says he left his throne of glory to come and die for us. It's not in vain what he did. No es en vano lo que hizo. The devil's job is to try to get us guilty. The devil's job is to, to bring condemnation into our life. El trabajo del diablo es traer condenación. You're no good. You're no good for nothing. Look at you. Look at how you are. Mira, no sirve para nada. Mira cómo eres. Look, you messed up. Look at what you did. That's the devil's job. You need to get up and say, hush up, devil. Because somebody gave their life for me. That even though, the Bible says that even though we were sinners, you were a sinner and he still came for you. He didn't wait for you to get all things right. He said, even though he knew you were a sinner, he still came to die because he knew that you were going to change. Él sabía que te ibas a cambiar. And he still came for you. He said he came, he came not to find the ones that were already saved. He came for the lost. El que estaba perdido, that's who he came for. You were lost. I was lost. And he came for us. And then he said he got, he desires to gather us like the chicken does his chicks. Desea acorralarnos y juntarnos como la gallina hace sus polluelos. How much he loves you. Not me, pastor, because I'm a sinner. He said, I don't care. I want you. Yes. I'd rather have this place full of sinners than have this place full of people that think they're perfect. Come on now. I've told you this before. That people say, I, I don't go to that church because there's a bunch of hypocrites. Good, get them all in here. Trae a todos los hipócritas que tengas aquí, aleluya, because they need the Lord. Ellos necesitan al Señor. Just like you need the Lord. They need the Lord too. Can I get an amen? So, the devil's job, and I know it's not even going into where it's But this is, this is the message. That, that this is what I want to talk about, the kingdom. And it's good that he brought this up because I'm going to tie it up right here real quick to, to kind of finish it up. I'm going to tie this up because our job is 
to advance the kingdom of God? How are we to advance the kingdom of God? ¿Cómo vamos a avanzar el reino de Dios? God's agenda was to advance the kingdom, to talk about the kingdom, de hablar acerca del reino. But you cannot advance something that you don't know. Can I get an amen? amen. Tú no puedes avanzar algo que tú no sabes. So the Bible says that the people perish for lack of knowledge. So I want to focus on what is the original message or the original mandate of Jesus Christ. ¿Cuál es el mensaje o el mandato original de Jesucristo? What was his message? ¿Cuál era el mensaje que Dios, aleluya, uh, estaba dando? We need to rediscover, tenemos que redescubrir otra vez, ¿Qué es lo que Jesús quería decir? What was God's original? We come back to the same thing that I've been talking about. What was God's original intent? ¿Cuál era el intento original de Dios? What was his original intent? Why, amen, why are you here? The church, the church has lost, amen, The church has lost it a lot of the time. A veces la iglesia lo ha perdido. That we preach about a lot of the stuff, but we don't preach about the kingdom. No predicamos del reino. Del reino de Dios. The kingdom of God. Amen? And sometimes you can read Mark, Matthew, uh, Mark, I mean Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and you can just, you can go in there and you'll be surprised of what Jesus preached. <laughs> si tú lees Marcos, Mateo, Marcos, Lucas y Juan, tú te vas a sorprender de lo que Jesucristo predicó. What Jesus preached and what we are preaching, they were two different things. Son dos cosas diferentes. Can I tell you why? Because we preach, amen, the gospel of Jesus, but we don't preach the message that Jesus preached. Nosotros predicamos el mensaje de Jesús pero no predicamos el mensaje que predicó Jesús. Yes, we got to tell people about Jesus, but what was Jesus preaching about? What was he going through the streets talking about? ¿Qué iba, qué iba hablando cuando iba caminando por las calles? He was talking about the kingdom. His message was the kingdom. Su mensaje era acerca del reino. So we get caught up about talking about something that we forget what he was really talking about. Amen. Nos olvidamos de lo que verdaderamente Dios estaba hablando. Sí, tenemos. I don't want you to uh, misinterpret what I'm trying to say. No quiero que malinterpretes lo que te estoy diciendo. Yes, we have to let people know about Jesus, but what was Jesus preaching about? What was he telling the people? Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Arrepentidos porque el reino de los cielos se ha acercado y ha llegado. It's here. It's here, the kingdom of, of God is here. He didn't say my kingdom, he said the kingdom of God is here, and the kingdom of God is inside of you. Dice, el reino de Dios ha llegado, ha venido, y el reino de Dios está dentro de ti. That's what he was preaching about. So when we learn this thing and we understand what Jesus was really preaching, what do we have to do? We have to repent. Tenemos que arrepentirnos. And repent means that we have to change our mindset. Change the way we think. Tenemos que arrepentirnos. Arrepentirse es cambiar de pensamiento. Cambiar nuestra mente. You have to change the way you think. We have to break religion off of you. Yes. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yes. Religion, re listen. My God. Can, can I tell you something? I don't want to go too far off. I don't want to go too far off on this, but religion Religious people, or, or uh, can you, can I tell you that the word Christians, which we call ourselves, a pagan person in the, in the book, I believe it was Corinthians, called us, the pagans called us Christians. Los paganos nos llamaron a nosotros cristianos. That's their title for us. Ese era el título de ellos para nosotros. So they called us that. So every time they, they held us at a, at, a, at a certain standard, nos mantienen a un, a un nivel. And we have to try, we always have to try to meet that standard for the sinners because if not, they're going to come and tell you, I thought you were a Christian. Yeah, yeah. man. Yeah. Porque si tú no, no estás al nivel que ellos te, te tienen a ti, yo te voy a decir, tú pensabas que tú eres cristiano. No eres cristiano tú. And I'm not saying that we're not Christian. What I'm trying to tell you is that you need to understand 
that you don't have to be what other people call you. What you are is a son of God. Did you hear me? You're a son of God. Tú eres un hijo de Dios. And we have to know that we are the sons of God. I'm not a servant of God. I'm a son of God. Yo no soy un siervo de Dios. Yo soy un hijo de Dios. A servant don't know what the master. Un siervo no conoce lo que el Señor. Pero un hijo, si a son, knows it. Hallelujah, my God. So we have to understand that if, listen, if Jesus is the king, if he's the king of kings, yes. he's not talking about the worldly and, and, and Queen Elizabeth and whatever king was on either. You are a king. Amen. Tú eres un rey. Yo soy un rey. He is the king of
you have to go back to where you came from. Cuando tú te mueres, tú tienes que regresar a donde tú eres. The body goes back to the ground because that's what you were made of. But your spirit, the Bible says, to be absent from the body, the house, is to be present by God. No sickness can ever touch you. Hallelujah. No hay enfermedad que 
said, so can you know why? Because my blood runs through your veins. Mi sangre corre por tus venas. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel the spirit of God in me. So, so now, now, he's got, he, 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 he you, you guys, you guys, when there's a problem here on earth, we want to leave earth. Jesus said, Lord, I, I'm praying you that you don't take them out of earth. <laughs> Keep them here. Amen. I want you to take me, Lord. Just come right now. I can't do it. God said, I don't need you up here. Amen. I got business to take care of over there. I can go down there. I got you. Amen. 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 So, so we want to die because we want to go to heaven. God said, no, 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 no. You got work to do down there. Yeah. People need to know who I am yes. down there. Yes. And the only way they're going to know yes. is when they see me inside of you. Yes. When they see me, when they see you talking like me, when they see you walking like me, when they see you acting like me, he said they will know who I am. And you tell them, I'm not from here. My daddy said, Woo. I don't come to glorify myself, but I come to glorify the one that said Stop trying to. We, we, we want to go back in there. I want to go to heaven, God said. Uh-uh. Got work for you down there. I got what? Yes. He ain't through yet. Yes. Look at your neighbor tell me, he ain't through yet. Yes. Tell him I'm a king. Tell him I'm a king. Come on, tell somebody, I'm a king. You are a king. Yes. And your father is the king of kings. Tu eres rey y tu padre es rey de reyes. And as long as you're in the house, you'll be a prince. But the moment that you get out of the house, Amen. Oh, Lord, hallelujah. My God. They said that the prince, that the king of, uh, I believe it was Europe, I'm not too sure where it was, there's a king. And his son wanted to have uh, of Portugal, Portugal, I'm sorry. The king of per Portugal, el, el rey de Portugal. There was a king there, and his son was the prince, su hijo era prince. And the dad said, in order for you to become a king, I had to take you out of my house. So the moment that he took his son out of the house, out of Portugal, he put his son in Brazil. Puso su hijo en Brasil. And the moment that his son stepped into Brazil, he became a king. Right. <laughs> so now Brazil is part of Portugal yep. because yeah. the king said, I can't have you in my house and you'll be a king. Yeah. You'll be a prince all your life. Yeah. Right. You have got to get out of my house, yes. go get your own territory yes. that I've already have assigned for you, yes. have it there for you, and as soon as you get there, you'll become a king. Yes. So now everything you do and say there, they're going to obey you. Why? Because you're automatically a king because you came out of royalty. Amen. Hallelujah. So the moment that you stepped into this earth, you were already a king. Oh, I can't wait to be. No, you're already there. Because God already had this place prepared for you. Amen. And he said, whatever you shall say unto this mountain, Yes, hallelujah. He didn't say to people. He said to this mountain. Hallelujah. He said it shall be removed. Yes. And whatever you tell it to do, my God, it shall obey you. Whatever you say, whatever you speak, it shall come to pass. And God said, let there be light. Amen. Dios a la luz, and light was. Amen. And you look at the mountains and say, move, hallelujah, and be cast into the sea. And the Bible says, if you believe, it shall yes. do whatever yes. you say. Amen. 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 Yes. So I ask you today, are you a servant yes, or are you a son? Hallelujah. Yes, are you a servant or are you a son? Hallelujah. See, God won't reveal his secrets to his servants. He will only reveal them to his son. Hallelujah. Yes. Woo! Jesus, my God. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Let me give you this and I'll finish with this. Go to the Jesus told the story about the prodigal son. You know, the story that you can him. Jesus said that the, one of the sons took his inheritance and he left. And I've always talked about how sometimes we, we need to have a pig pen experience. A veces tenemos que tener una experiencia con los sardos. To be able to come back and know, I need to go back to my father's house. Tengo que regresar a la casa de mi padre. Oh my God, anybody here? So when he, listen, the son said, when he was in the pig pen, he said, I'm going to go back to my father's house, and I'm going to tell him to make me like one of his sons. Dijo, dijo, pero dijo, voy a regresar a mi casa y le voy a decir a mi padre que me haga como uno de sus criados, uno de sus siervos. So when he came into the father's house, the father came and embraced him, lo abrazó. He said, you're not a servant, you're a son. Tú no eres siervo, tú eres hijo. And the very first thing he did, you know what he did? He placed a, fig, a, a, a ring Amen. The ring, the ring, this is the symbol. Three things that a ring represents. Tres cosas que la niña representa, real quick. The ring represents the name of the family. El anillo representa el nombre de la familia, el apellido, the, the name of the family. Oh my God. The second thing that the ring represents, la segunda cosa que el anillo representa es la autoridad de la familia. In other words, he said, I'm giving you the authority back that you thought you lost. Te voy a regresar la autoridad que tú pensaste que habías perdido. Te la voy a regresar. Not only am I giving you my name back, I'm giving you the authority back. No solamente te doy el apellido otra vez, pero te voy a dar la autoridad para que ejercites tu autoridad. So that you can exercise your authority. My God, if I And the number three thing that he told them that the ring represents, la tercera cosa es this, and don't miss this, the third thing that the ring represents is total access to all the resources in the house. Woo, Jesus. Significa acceso total de todos los recursos de la casa. God said, that the Father said, I'm giving you my name, I'm giving you my authority, and everything that I have, I'm giving it back to you. Woo, Jesus. Dice, te voy a dar, aleluya, te voy a dar mi nombre otra vez. Te voy a dar mi autoridad otra vez. Y te voy a dar todos mis recursos. I don't know where you've been, but I want to tell you right now, there is a ring with your name on it. There is a ring that is about to be put on you by your heavenly father, and he's not here to condemn you and call you a servant, but he's here to call you a son. He's here to call you a king. Está aquí para llamarte hijo. Hay un anillo con tu nombre. There's a ring with your name. Do you want it? Stand here, Jesus. Woo, Jesus, my God. Woo. Give up on us. 